In this video, I'm going to give my opinion on whether or not the driving test in Great Britain is rigged. And why are driving examiners going on strike? Many people believe that driving examiners can only pass a certain number of people each day, week or month. That they have to follow a set pass rate. But this is not true. If it was true, myself and many other instructors would find out very quickly. Here's why. The DVSA, they're the people who set the driving test, employ around about 4,600 people. And around 1,600 of those are driving examiners. And the vast majority of driving examiners I have spoken to were once a driving instructor. Now, put yourself in the shoes of a driving instructor who then becomes an examiner. You've been a driving instructor for several years, preparing people for the road and to pass their driving test, taking people to the driving test. Some have been passing, some have been failing. You decide you fancy a change. You want to become a driving examiner. So you go through all the training that's required only to be told that you have to follow a pass rate. How do you think that instructor is going to feel about that. After all those years of taking people to test, to realize that some of them were failing simply because of a pass rate. I know I would be fuming. I'd lose my top over that. I'll go berserk. I would not be quiet about it. You think the DVSA can get all those examiners to keep this, what is really a conspiracy, under wraps, that they can only pass a certain number of people no, I don't think so. I think there would be only a minority of people that would go along with such a nuisance. If that was the case, if the driving test was rigged and driving examiners could only pass a certain number of people each day, week, month, whatever it is, we would find out and we'd find out quickly. However, Although the DVSA do not set a pass rate for their examiners, there's nothing stopping an individual examiner trying to follow a pass rate. I cannot account for an individual. No one can. What an individual does is what they do. But why would they do that? Why would an examiner go, you know what, I'm gonna try and pass 40% of people? Well, there is actually a little bit of pressure as to why they would do that. One of the ways the DVSA monitor driving examiners is by monitoring their pass rate. If there's a test centre and the average pass rate for the examiners at their test centre is say 40% and there's one examiner who has a pass rate of 80% and that's not over a day, that's not over a week, over many months or a year, a quarter, a couple of quarters, or even a year. If they're way off, that's going to ring alarm bells. Why is it that that examiner is passing twice as many people as the average? Surely the examiner is passing people who are not ready. It can't be a case that they're just getting lucky and getting the good drivers, not over 1,700-ish pupils that they take during the year for test. I don't know what the probability is, but I think they would have a better chance of winning the lottery. So that does ring an alarm bell and the DVSA will look into that examiner to make sure that they're testing to the correct standard. So you could say, and this may happen, some examiners may do this, you could say that an examiner, to prevent themselves from being investigated and to make it look like they're doing their job well, try to follow that pass rate but I don't think they do. I don't think many do at least, because that would be much harder than just trying to do a good job. Imagine that, you're trying to stick to a pass rate, so you're failing people who should pass and passing people who should fail just to stick to a number. That sounds harder to me than just doing your job properly, because you'll be found out pretty quickly, especially as driving instructors do sit on tests. I've sat in on most of the driving tests that my pupils have done. I think driving examiners generally do a very good job, at least the ones that I have observed. Okay, there's been a few times over the years when I've been a little bit miffed, but 
we're human. We don't do things perfectly every time. Sometimes I give a brilliant lesson and come away feeling proud. Other times, not so proud. But overall, the tests that I have observed, they have been fair. So why are examiners going on strike? Well, you've probably guessed it, it's because of pay. Their pay now is worth less than it was last year because of inflation. According to the Office for National Statistics, CPI inflation between October 2021 and October 2022 is 11.1%. That's significant. That means their pay, if it's not keeping up with that inflation, goes less far than it did before inflation. So, what can they do? Well, I can tell you what they can't do. They can't do what most people working in the private sector can do. Let's say you are a mechanic, you work on cars, you work for a garage, you work in the private sector, and inflation goes crazy as it is right now. Double digit inflation, your wage isn't keeping up. You go to your employer and you say, can you give me a pay rise to keep up with inflation? And your employer says, no. Well, you have options as a mechanic. You could go self-employed, set up your own business, or you could find work elsewhere at a different garage who are offering more money. And why would they be offering more money? Well, there's a shortage of examiners at the moment, so let's assume there's a shortage of mechanics as well. They are offering more money because they need you. They want to entice you from the garage you're at to them, to work for them. So you sidestep and get a pay increase. Examiners don't get that luxury. They work for the DVSA, which is a government agency. They can't work as an examiner for anyone else. There is no one else. So they can't sidestep and they can't set up on their own because if they want to conduct driving tests and give out full UK driving licenses, well, they have to work for the DVSA. So either they completely change their career, which is a massive step. They may not want to do that, especially depending on what stage of their career they're in. They might be near the end of their career. Or they could sit and settle for their pay going less far and then becoming more hard up as a result. The only other option is to go on strike. I understand it's not just the public sector that go on strike, the private sector do also, but it seems to be the case that most of the time a strike is happening, it's in the public sector. At the moment, I'm just explaining the situation that examiners are finding themselves in right now. But more importantly for you, when are the strikes happening? Well, I'll put them on screen now, and I'm not going to leave a link to the Gov website just in case it changes, but I recommend you Google Driving Examiner Strike UK Gov and look for the Gov website to get the official information about the strikes. Also, that website should tell you what you need to do if you have a driving test on a strike day. I still recommend going to your test because not all examiners are going on strike. One of the reasons why I think the strike dates may change or even be cancelled, I hope they are cancelled, is because I can't see why the DVSA can't give examiners a pay increase. The driving test, the practical driving test, has been £62 since March 2009. That's nearly 14 years and it hasn't gone up. The theory test, that went down in price in 2014 and in 2015 twice, two price decreases. So there's no reason why the DVSA can't raise the price of the tests by inflation so that they can pass it on to the examiners. Whether that happens or not, I don't know, but we'll have to wait and see. Well, I hope the lack of light hasn't ruined the picture quality too much. I've put a light on me to brighten things up a bit, but this is England and it's December, so we don't get a huge number of hours of light, and when it's cloudy, it's not that light anyway. If you found the video interesting, please give it a thumbs up, and if you're looking for car insurance, check out links to Collingwood and Confused in the description. If you're learning to drive and want to insure yourself on somebody else's car, Collingwood are there for you because you can do so without affecting the owner's policy, taking away a big stress from the owner of that car. Via the links, there's up to 35% off and a £20 Amazon gift card. If you want to insure your own car, I recommend checking out the link to confuse.com. You fill out one quote form, 
get loads of quotes back from many insurers to compare who's cheapest, and you can change your car on that quote as many times as you like to see how much it costs to insure different cars. That's a useful tool when you're shopping for cars and you want to know how much it costs to insure them. Using the links doesn't cost you anything, but it does support the channel, so thank you very much. Subscribe to get my future videos, and until the next one, cheerio.